Good morning, class. Or good day, class. Uh, welcome back to your ASI 124N, your engineering mechanics tool, or what we call it, the dynamics of uh, rigid bodies. And to, for today's lesson, we are going to talk about the lesson 3, which is your curvilinear motion. But before we proceed to our main lesson for today, let's have a quick recap of what we have discussed last lesson, no, previously on dynamics. Kumbaga, we did uh, discuss um, three main topics there. Uh, your constant acceleration. Uh, second is your free-falling bodies. And lastly is your variable acceleration. All under sa rectilinear motion. So what we have learned on the first topic of uh, concerning about con uh, constant acceleration is that we learned how to derive you know, those formulas that we, are, we have um, discovered last lesson. We, we, we learned how to derive or where those formula came from. No? Uh, for example, your uh, instantaneous velocity is computed by V is equals to ds over dt. And then from that, we derive a formula after we integrate the, that instantaneous or that differential uh, equation. And then, sa same through with the uh, acceleration, we already uh, learned, uh, we learned that on how to uh, derive the formula on getting this, uh, those motion parameters that we have mentioned. Next is for free falling bodies. The, the catch there is that our, our constant acceleration there changed to uh, g, you know? from a to c, uh, from a sub c to g. And then g, we, over, uh, we, we learned that g is the acceleration due to gravity. So therefore, a free-falling body, free-falling free bodies is experiencing a constant acceleration due to gravity, which is we discovered that g is equal to 9.81 meters per second square for metric system, and then for U.S. customary, we uh, we already know that 32.2 uh, feet per second square. That's and um, we we also solve some problems related to free-falling free bodies. And next is your variable acceleration. We did, did learn, no. That um, this variable acceleration that our particle uh, experiencing through a path, you know, is represented using graphs. We learned that there are two sets of graphs that we are going to use to um, for us to to be able to represent the the what they call this uh, the motion of the particle we can uh, represent that using graphs which is there are two sets your at no no st vp at graph and then the s and as graph which is um st vt and at graphs are res uh, with respect to time and then for a, a vs and a as naman is with respect to the position of the particle and then we learn there na how to uh, create a VT graph from an ST graph, no? uh, and then we learn also how to uh, get AT graph from the VT graph, no? and we learn that from the variable acceleration. So, for today's lesson, we're going to talk about the curvilinear motion, and which is, in this lesson, we will discuss the general aspects of curvilinear motion, and then in subsequent sections, we will consider the three types of coordinate system often used to analyze this motion. So there are three, uh, we're going to, to talk about three types of coordinate system that will um, analyze or to represent the curvilinear motion of our particle. Okay, so for our lesson contents for today's lesson, uh, we have general curvilinear motion. Second is your curvilinear motion, rectangular coordinates. Three is the motion of projectile and normal and tangential components. This this uh, topics we will discuss for the lesson three or for the linear motion. And then at the end of the lesson, I expected you you must be able to uh, explain the principle of curvilinear motion. Uh, next is derive the equation relating acceleration, velocity, time, and position of a particle moving in a curv curvilinear path. Next is you are going to derive basic equations in the analysis of projectile motion. Next is to discuss the components of acceleration of a particle in a curvilinear motion. And then lastly, solve problems in curvilinear motion as well as motion of projectile. So these are your learning outcomes for this 
lasha. So let's start for the part one. So the part one is the general uh, curvilinear motion. So what exactly is curvilinear motion? So curvilinear motion occurs when a particle moves along a curved path. Kumpaga, hindi na siya straight. Ano yun? You, baga, basically, yun lang yung uh, curvilinear motion mo. Baga, hindi na siya na move in a straight line path. Uh, 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 unlike sa rectilinear motion is that it's moving a uh, like a straight line path. Kumpaga, mas, ano to, mas uh, difficult than the rectilinear motion. Kasi, we have some... Uh, changes in how to solve those uh, parameters or motion parameters. So it is a vector analysis. You know, it's used. A vector analysis is used to formulate the particle's position, velocity, and acceleration. Gagamitin na natin yung uh, na learn natin sa statics, which is your vector analysis, to solve or to formulate the particle's position. Uh, basically, we will use vector analysis to 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 create a formula for the particle's position, velocity, and acceleration. So the path of the particle is often described in three dimensions. Tatlo na siya. Hindi, hindi, unlike the rectilinear motions, that we are concerned with only two dimensions, diba? the x and y plane. But here, we are going to consider na the z plane or the z axis. Okay. So first, position. So what will happen in the position if your a path is in curvilinear motion? So or your movement or your motion is in curvilinear or in not this not in a straight line manner. So consider a particle located at a point. You no, know? consider a particle down in a point at a point on the space curve represented by the blue curve. Ito, ito, ito yung kumbaga, um, space curve or kumbaga yung path na na move or like path na move ng na particle natin. Okay? Kumbaga, it is defined no, by the path function S of t or position as a function of time. Kumbaga, ito yung curve mo, S of t. Uh, take note that it is respect to time. It will move, no? So, kumbaga, yung position natin, nag-iiba na dito. Diba? So, the position of the particle measure from a fixed point O ito yung origin natin, will be designated by the position vector r is equals to r sub t. Okay? So, kumbaga, ang particle natin pala is um, is designated, or no, part, uh, position of the particle is measured from a fixed point, O, will be designated by the position vector r. Kumbaga, yung position is uh, defined by the position vector, which is r is equals to r sub t. Kumbaga, vector na siya. Hindi, 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 uh, unlike sa rectilinear motion is that our uh, path is, yun talaga yung origin, or like the axis of the movement, no? Or the curve talaga, kung ano yung movement, dun talaga yung nag, uh, what origin start, no? Hindi, unlike dito sa curvilinear is that we are going to use the position vector R, with which is, ma meron na tayong um, fixed point, oh, with the origin sa, uh, kumbaga concave ng curve natin. Kumbaga doon na nag na, na, nag uh, nagseto yung ating uh, region O or point O. Okay? So, note this that the both that both the magnitude and direction of this vector will change as the particle moves along the curve, di ba? And like sa uh, rectilinear, hindi talaga siya na uh, hindi talaga siya nag change yung position na and unless, no, kung mag-move talaga siya in another position or another uh, position so to our plane. Kumbaga dito, ang direction din is mag-change. Of this vector will change as the particle moves along the curve. Kumbaga sa rectilinear is that ang direction is constant. Kung yun, dun talaga yung path ng ano mo, kumbaga, so mare, let's have an example for rectilinear is that your uh, path will move to the right, right lang talaga yung direction niya. Unlike dito sa, ano natin, sa curvilinear is that iba na yung direction as it moves along the cur curved path, di ba? Okay? And then, next is your displacement. So, so and displacement, same pa rin sa rectilinear, is the change of position of the upper particle. So, suppose that during a small time interval, delta t, the particle moves a distance delta s along the space, ayan dito, 
Kumbaga, nag-move na yung particle natin into another position. So, na along the space curve to a new position, R prime, which is yung new position na na, na move or new position na ng particle natin is defined or it is denoted by R prime. And ito yung kumbaga, second position niya or it's uh, next position niya after it moved. So, the um, difference now is what we call the delta r. So, the new position r prime is defined by r prime is equal to r plus delta r. Kumbaga, r plus the change of the position. Kumbaga, yun lang yung displacement to, to have your displacement. So, basically, yung displacement natin is this, itong delta r. Ito lang r prime is that how to solve your r prime. You just have to sum or find the sum of the two uh variable here r plus delta r so the displacement of the particles change in the position is represented by delta r ito lang kung simple lang kung baga change lang ng uh, position ng particle natin and to find the displacement is that kukuhin lang natin yung uh, value ng delta r and that's your displacement for the curvilinear path so the particle's displacement is determined by vector subtraction. Subtraction, okay? So delta r is equal to r prime minus r. That's take note plus i. Di ka di directly even a even minus uh like mag subtract kaagad, no? Di kung e you will uh determine mo na the the components of that uh kasi vector to eh. And then we are talking about a three dimensional uh, plane here is so that uh, therefore that we are going to consider their components or their um, what they call this uh, their components from x y and z ni ni specify lang dito na vector subtraction yung gagamitin natin so in velocity during the time delta t or when the particle changes position its average velocity is computed by Delta R over delta T. Okay? So, same lang pa rin. Same pa rin yung thought niya dito. Or like, the idea on how to solve the, uh, the velocity sa rectilinear. But, change lang dito is its uh, displacement, which is uh, defined by delta R. And we all know that this delta R is a vector quantity or vector, uh, uh, vector a unit vector. Okay? So be careful. So next is that instantaneous velocity of the particle is determined from equation 3.1.1 by letting delta t approaches to zero. Kung baga, yung equation 3.1 natin is here, di ba? Itong 3.1 is here. Dito yung nadidunat natin from delta r is equal to r minus r. r delta r minus r. So instantaneous velocity of the particles is determined from equation 3.1.1 take note that three, equation 3.1.1 is uh, r prime or no delta r is equals to r prime minus r by letting delta t approaches to zero and consequently the direction of r delta r approaches the tangent of the curve kung baga kung liliitin natin from the instantaneous uh, event of that displacement kung baga liliitin natin yung value ng uh, when your time or like kumbaga hindi pa nagsistart na mag displace or mag move yung particle natin to another position kumbaga yung time is that hindi pa nagsistart therefore yung delta r natin is a, will approach to a tangent to the curve kumbaga ito na yung kumbaga uh, ang delta r natin is tangent lang talaga sa curve natin therefore what will happen there is that V will be computed now as limit of delta R over delta T as delta T approaches to zero. Mabaka, ito na yung new uh, uh, formula, no? Kung, kung, when we say instantaneous velocity, ito yung gagamitin natin na formula. Okay? So, evaluating, we have V is equal to dr over dt. Kung baga, differential uh, unit of the position, and then differential unit of the time, we can solve the instantaneous velocity at that moment or at that instant. Okay? And then, ganun na simple. But as you can observe here, same lang talaga yung idea sa rectilinear, which is V is equals DS over DT. There, ba? And here, 
is that VR na siya kasi iba na yung kung baga, hindi na nas hindi na yung hindi na uh, same yung position ng ano natin ng particle it will be defined using my unit vector r okay so the r over dt the change of r at, at an instant and change of the time at that instant so it will be denoted as equation 3.1 3.1.3 okay so since the r will be uh, tangent to the curve yeah? since the r will be tangent to the curve the direction of instantaneous velocity is also tangent to the curve take note class since dr will be tangent to the curve the direction of instantaneous will the direction okay the direction will be also tangent to the curve ayan kumbaga dito lang kumbaga yung the direction of velocity natin which is tangent to the curve kaya to tangent to the curve kumbaga as we all know that the tangent or uh, the derivative of a function is the tangent is the tangent curve or that that the derived uh, equation it will be tangent to the curve itself diba? that's the definition of the the different differential calculus diba? if you differentiate a function that um, result will be a, the tangent of that curve or of that function Kumbaga, what I'm saying here is that for the magnitude of V, which is the speed, it is obtained by realizing that the length of the straight line segment, delta R, shown in the figure B kanina, the bottom delta R, the change ng position from R to delta, uh, no, R prime, oh, and then the difference in the, or the, the gap between them is the delta R. So that's your uh, kumbaga, magnitude, no? So, approaches the arc length of delta S as delta T. Kung baga yung delta S natin, no? Kung baga, the delta S is the, delta S is the arc length of the curve. Diba? Diba kung, kung magkukunod natin yung uh, perimeter of the circle, circle at in angle. And to solve that curve of that angle is using arc length, diba? Formula which is R times delta T. Ano, r times theta or r times the angle. So then we have v is equals to the limit of delta r over delta t as t approaches to zero. Next, uh, is equals now to the limit of delta s over delta t. So what happened here is that from delta r to delta s, kasi yun nga, the magnitude, we are talking about the magnitude of the velocity right here. So, which is the speed, we all know that the magnitude of a velocity is defined as the speed, diba? It doesn't uh, care about the direction, magnitude lang talaga ng uh, velocity natin. Is it obtained though by real realizing that the length of the straight line segment, delta r, shown in the figure B kalina, approaches the r length, delta s, as delta t approaches to zero. So, what I, what, uh, what I'm been talking about right here is that balitay sa uh, ano natin sa displacement. Kung baga, if our delta t approaches to zero, uh, it means that it uh, paliit na paliit yung value ng ang time natin. It will come to a uh, a point na yung itong black arrow na delta r will be like magta-touch na siya basically sa curve natin yung itong yung itong black is arrow right here if we are going to find or our our delta t will approach to zero means that as our delta t uh, became smaller and smaller and smaller diba our delta t will become of uh, will approach the curve of our delta s ayan yeah, delta s ha it ang delta s is the blue ha blue line and delta r is the black arrow right here which is the change in the position which is your displacement so ang sabi dun, if our time daw is we're going to uh, get the smaller and smaller value of that of our time therefore our delta r will also smaller and smaller and it will come to a point na yung black arrow magta-touch na sa blue line curve Kasi, ito yung kumbaga sinasabi niya dito, how to find 
how to transform from dr to ds kaya from delta r naging delta s na siya provided that our time will approach to or delta time will approach to zero so bumalik pa din as we have learned from uh, rectilinear motion v is equal to ds over dt i hope you, you wala hindi mo di kayo na, na confused from that kasi nga uh, uulitin ko yung delta r as the time as the time approaches to zero or hindi sa, sa stand na bago pa lang talaga siya nag-move our delta r will approach to delta s so sinab dito it it can it will it may equate from delta r to delta s same lang yung value nila at that very very instant okay so we can say that v is equal to ds over dt Paren. Okay, we can compute that using the formulas. Thus, the speed can be obtained by differentiating the path function s with respect to time. So, bumalik rin tayo sa uh, idea sa rectilinear. Kung baga, if you are going to find the magnitude of the velocity of this, of this curve or of this path, you just have to differentiate the path function s with respect to time. Yun ang lang kung kaisip dito sa rectilinear. But anyways... So, the, if the particle has a velocity v, no? tapos na tayo sa velocity ha, acceleration na tayo. Yeah, acceleration na acceleration na dito. Oh, ano may merong e dito, class. Hindi tayo perfect, anyway. Acceleration, uh, if the particle has a velocity v at uh, time t in a velocity v prime is equal to v plus delta v at t is at t plus delta t, then the average acceleration of the particle during the time interval T, again, ang nag-change naman dito is our velocity. No? Either ni-increase, uh, um, ni nag-increase siya, siya uh, or ni-decrease. Basta may change yung velocity natin. So, therefore, na meron tayong acceleration right there. So, to compute for our acceleration, same para sa rectilinear, this delta V over delta T. Okay? So, Acceleration is that uh, to obtain the instantaneous acceleration, again, instantaneous naman tayo, pinag, pinag, uh, like, we're talking about instantaneous acceleration right here. So we are going to let our delta t approach to zero again so that we can solve for the instantaneous acceleration. Okay, for the equation 3.1.5, yung velocity is equal to ds over dt. Ayan. Then our a is equal to the limit of delta v over delta t which is your delta t approaches to zero. Therefore, our a can be solved by dv over dt. Same pa rin sa rectilinear motion. Kasi, kinonsider natin dito sa instantaneous acceleration. Eh. Kung baga, in that instant, yung uh, we let our delta t as approach to zero, it means that hindi, at the moment that nag-move kaunti na yung uh, velocity ng particle natin as ayun nga as given that our time is small very small amount of the time so we can compute for the acceleration by this formula dv over dt okay so in acceleration we can also obtain acceleration given by displacement same same thing with the rectilinear motion we can solve that the acceleration using our displacement. So, given the displacement sub by substituting equation 3.1.3, this is your earth position, our velocity, which is v, v is equal to ds over dt, and then, i-subject natin sa equation 3.1.6, this 3.1.6 is the equation of acceleration is equal to dv over dt, this one, and then we have, and, and then we have, d squared r dt squared same same thing with the rectilinear motion yun lang kung baga baga uh, your our v has a formula by dr over dt and then uh substitute mo lang yun here so that d times dr is d squared r and d times dt is dt squared okay kung baga ang thought lang dito is that we can solve or we can uh we can determine the acceleration using the, the displacement of our particle. Okay. Kanina, acceleration is uh, obtained by using yeah, dv over dt. But we can also solve the acceleration by using this formula. 
So let's continue for uh, our discussion for part in the next video.